In today's show, Bitcoin heads into FOMC day on 24-hour highs amid concern over $24,300 top. In today's show, I'll be breaking down the latest technical analysis, including crypto analyst Josh Rager, likely chop for equities going into FOMC, which expected Bitcoin and crypto chop around also today, and quitting crypto analyst Crypto Tony. Bitcoin update, I will remain in my short while we're below the range high at 22,200. Reclaiming the range high would result in a long position being opened as long as we remain above. Still a volatile week, so be careful going balls deep unless it's your wife. Sage advice and quoting whale map rejection for Bitcoin despite the absence of supply at $24,000 is not a good sign. Neither technical analysis nor on chain volume profile saw this level as resistance, with realized price bands being the only one hinting on a possible rejection. Now, for a fun fact, it was 10 years ago today, PayPal founder Peter Thiel received his first Bitcoin, and exactly 10 years ago, Bitcoin was trading at $8.90. And this just in, El Salvador President Nayib Bokele sheds debt defense fault worries amid the Bitcoin downturn, quoting him here, El Salvador has the liquidity to pay all commitments. Also in today's show, crypto ATM market value to hit $472 million by 2027 per new data. That's right, market research forecasts the global crypto ATM market to be worth almost a half a billion dollars by 2027, driven by growth in developing markets and growing adoption. Also in today's show, ex-Goldman executive warns economy is about to drop off of a cliff and shares what this means for crypto. That's right, we're talking about the macro guru guru himself, Rao Powell. And he also says massive Ethereum supply shock is incoming as Ether prepares to outpace Bitcoin. That's right. Rao Powell says Ethereum is set for a series of supply shocks that can help Ethereum vastly outperform Bitcoin once again. Also in today's show, IMF recession warning sees Bitcoin dip under $21,000 amid fresh $1 million Bitcoin price forecast. That's right. Recently, Plan B predicted a $100,000 to $1 million range for the king crypto within the next five years. I'll be sharing his latest updates. We'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market. All this, plus so much more, in today's show. Here come the news alerts. I drop a brand new episode every single day. The goal is to get to 100,000 subs. If you like getting that crypto, be sure to smash that subscribe button and ring that bell to turn on all notifications to receive daily premium crypto news alerts every single day just like this. All right, welcome back to another episode of Crypto News Alerts. I'm your host, JV. How's it going, my crypto fam? Today is a big day for the crypto market. Bitcoin attempted to claw back losses on July 27th as the macro day of reckoning arrived for risk assets. Here you're looking at the Bitcoin one-hour candle chart. Now, data from Cointelegraph Markets Point Trading View confirmed a 24-hour high for Bitcoin prior to the Wall Street open today on July 27th. Bitcoin has sunk below 21,000 in the first portion of the week, heightening nervousness amongst traders already wary of potential headwinds from the U.S. Federal Reserve, quoting crypto analyst Josh Rager, likely chop for equities going into FOMC, which expected Bitcoin and crypto chop around also today. That's right, today, July 27th, is set to reveal the FOMC next base rate hike with expectations flirting between 75 and 100 BPS in size, but favoring the former. Now, both, however, are likely unfavorable for cryptocurrencies as they reflect worries over both inflation and a willingness to bring the economy closer to a recession to tame it, including crypto Tony. Bitcoin update, I will remain in my short while we're below the range high at 22,200, reclaiming the range high would result in a long position being opened as long as we remain above. Still a volatile week, so be careful going balls deep unless it's your wife. Sage advice and others look beyond the Fed event to warn that even Bitcoin's recent trip to multi-week highs was not enough to change its overall bearish trend as well map concluded here. Rejection for Bitcoin despite the absence of supply at $24,000 is not a good sign. Neither technical analysis nor on-chain volume profile saw this level as resistance with realized price bands being the only one hinting on a possible rejection. Now this accompanying chart of realized price by address is a breakdown of what price different groups a Bitcoin last move, showing the relative absence Bitcoin 24280 local top. And Bitcoin's combined realized price at at 21,800 at the time of this recording, data from analytics firm Glassnode confirm. Now discussing the potential impact of the Fed further. Meanwhile, trading firm QCP Capital said that historical precedent was in fact on the side of hodlers. That's right, Fed Chairman Jerome Powell, staff predicted, would aim to reassure the markets that future rate hikes would not be as drastic as this, quoting them here, every FOMC meeting this year has seen positive immediate market reaction to the rate 
great decision. We expect the same for this one. And he continues, additionally, there is a good chance that Powell will indicate that this 75 BPS hike is a one-off and that the Fed will be recovering to 50 BPS on account of slowing growth and inflation easing up. Markets will react positively to this. Let me know if you agree or disagree. Now, that does not mean, however, that the rate announcement will be without its market jitters. From a volatility perspective, every FOMC this year has been a disappointment with front-end implied volatility dropping hard right after QCP added, and they also shared markets have been much more sensitive to data releases than FOMC. Realized volatility has been consistently higher post-CPI than post FOMC. Now for a fun fact, it was exactly 10 years ago today, PayPal founder, now billionaire Peter Thiel received his first Bitcoin. And exactly 10 years ago today, Bitcoin was trading at $8.90. Could you imagine stacking stats back then? And Empire Token points out, fun fact, everyone who bought back then paper handed for a few X or lost their hard drive, LOL. And also this just in, El Salvador president sheds debt default worries amid Bitcoin downturn, quoting Najib Bokele. Here, El Salvador has the liquidity to pay all commitments. Damn straight. And before I break down next story of the day, crypto ATM market value to hit $472 million by 2027 per new data. But first, let's take a quick look at the overall crypto market. As you can see, all the major cryptos are currently pumping. Back in the green, we got Bitcoin up about 2% for the day, trading above 21,300. We have Ether up almost 7%, trading just under $1,500. We also have Binance Coin pumping up over 6% for the day, trading at $256, along with XRP, Cardano, Solana, and Polkadot, all pumping and in the green but all right now let's break down our next way of the day the global crypto atm market is projected to grow at a rapid rate over the next five years as market research predicts the space to be worth over a half a billion dollars by 2027 that's right research and markets published a new report which estimates a compound annual growth rate of 59 percent for the industry from 2022 to 2027 and it currently values the crypto atm market at 46.4 million and expects this value to increase the 472 million over over a five-year time period. Now, the main drivers of the projected growth include growing remittances and fund transfers in developing countries, fluctuating monetary regulations, and an increase in crypto ATM installations around the world. Now, these insights are driven by in-depth qualitative analysis and verifiable data to create projections about the addressable market. Primary research included interviews, surveys, and observations involving market participants. And the report also delves into restraints on growth, which includes uncertain regulatory environments in different countries, lack of education and technical understanding of cryptocurrencies, security and privacy concerns and technical challenges around the scalability of installations are identified as barriers to growth. Now, crypto ATM service providers could also benefit from significant growth opportunities in developing markets and the growing acceptance of cryptocurrencies across different industries. I'd like to point out that in El Salvador, there are no fees to use crypto ATMs. So massive shout out once again to Najib Bokele and also happy belated birthday. It was his birthday just the other day. So show Najib Bokele some belated birthday love in the comments below. Now, the United States remains a significant market for crypto ATMs, leading the pack, accounting for 88% of crypto ATM installations around the world. The country saw some 641 crypto ATMs commissioned for use in the first 10 days of July 2022, while Canada, the second largest amount of crypto ATMs, making North America the most prolific adopter of the service. Now, the overall downturn across Cross crypto markets have had an effect on the rollout of new crypto ATMs with the rate of new installations showing a steady decline throughout 2022, but the future is looking promising. How many of you have used a Bitcoin or crypto ATM before? Let me know in the comments below. And what was your experience? And before I break down next story of the day, ex Goldman executive warns economy is about to drop off of a cliff and shares what this means for crypto. And Raul Powell also says massive Ethereum supply shock is incoming as ETH prepares to outpace Bitcoin. But first, let's take a quick look at the overall crypto market cap sitting under that critical $1 trillion milestone with $62.5 billion in volume in the past 24 hours. The current Bitcoin dominance back on the decline at 41.5% with the Ether dominance at 18%. 0.1%. And checking out the top 100 cryptocurrency gainers in the past 24 hours, we have Quant leading the pack of 15%, trading just under $94, followed by Ethereum Classic up over 13%, trading at $27.20, followed by Lido up 8.3%, trading at a dollar. 
52. And checking out the top 100 cryptocurrency gainers for the past week, you can see a sea of red, which is a handful in the green, including we have TWT up 11.5%, we have QTUM up 11.7%, and Bitcoin Gold up 11%. 0.1%. And checking out one of my favorite indicators is the Crypto Greed and Fear Index. Shows we are currently rated a 28 out of 100 in fear. Yesterday a 26, last week a 31, and last month a 12 in extreme fear. And if you're not familiar with the Crypto Greed and Fear Index, extreme fear can be a sign. Investors are too worried. That can be a great buying opportunity, aka BTFD, buy that freaking dip. And when investors are getting too greedy, that means the market is due for a correction. But all right, now let's break down our next story of the day. Real Vision CEO Raul Powell thinks crypto has probably bottomed and that the biggest macro influence on crypto is the global money supply. That's right, we're talking about the M2 money supply. In a new video, Powell predicts economic growth will soon fall off of a cliff, which will spur an increase in the money supply. The former Goldman Sachs executive shares a chart comparing the ISM manufacturing index to the US M2 money supply year on year, quoting the macro guru here. In this chart, ISM is inverted and the money supply looks like it should start bottoming out and going higher. If it goes higher, crypto should go with it. Now, that makes sense because an economic weakness comes, the central banks start coming into play, liquidity starts being pushed, into the system, we're already seeing it in China. That's probably picking up the money supply growth already, but I think we'll see it globally, so that becomes interesting. Now, the US dollar situation, maybe we see swap lines, that helps money supply. So I think we're going to see the turn in money supply. So that's the macro for crypto improving as growth goes slower. It's kind of counterintuitive because you think, well, if growth slow, then crypto is going to be bad. It's the opposite. A growth slows down, bond yields fall, inflation falls, money supply starts increasing, crypto starts doing well. Now, M2 is a measure of the current money supply that takes into account cash, check-in, savings deposits, money market securities, and other easily convertible assets. The ISM manufacturing index is viewed as an indicator of the health of the US economy. So there you have it. Now let's discuss Raul Powell saying massive Ethereum supply shock incoming as ETH prepares to outpace Bitcoin. Macroeconomic expert Raul Powell says Ethereum is set for a series of supply shocks that could help the second largest crypto asset by market cap vastly outperform the king crypto. Once again, in a new video update, the Real Vision CEO says that Ethereum's shift to a proof of stake system, which is tentatively set to happen in September, will likely eliminate significant amounts of sell pressure as participants take their coins off of the market and stake them for yield. And in addition, Powell speculates that Ethereum will benefit from the absence of minor selling down the price in order to pay for their operational costs, such as proof-of-work blockchains, quitting him here. What's really interesting here is that there is a supply reduction of really monumental proportions that's about to happen. There are no miners anymore, so therefore, all of the activity of miners of selling the tokens that they have earned, they probably sell about 80% of the tokens that they get just to fund their own activities. That is about a billion or $2 billion a month that's out of the market, so that's a small supply shock. There is ongoing pressure every day from miners who have been rewarded with Ethereum than the staking activity. There's currently about 9% of all the Ethereum staked by most guesses, that number should rise to about 30% because initially we should see some outsized deals, maybe up to as high as 20%, maybe it's 15%. Who the hell knows? But either way, it's going to attract a lot of capital into staking. And so that becomes very interesting itself because if it gets up to 30% of all ETH staked, that's 30% that is dormant. That's 30% cannot be used for DeFi, CeFi, rehypothecation, shorting, liquidity, provision, nothing. It's out of the system. Okay, that is a massive supply shock. So there you have it. Let me know if you agree or disagree with the crypto analysts. Powell also says that Ethereum could end up becoming a deflationary asset post-merge and compares its upcoming tokenomics to a stock buyback that increases the demand and decreases the supply at the same time. And the former Goldman Sachs executive says that the charts support this hunch that Ethereum is about to outperform Bitcoin. According to him, ETH slash BTC is getting ready to break out of a multi-year descending channel, making Ethereum a far more interesting bet for the macro investor, quitting him here. So I think a lot of this activity is getting very interesting. If I start looking at the price, we've talked a bit about Bitcoin, but if I look at the chart of Ethereum versus Bitcoin, to me, it's very close to breaking out of this downward channel. And as you know, I've been overweight Ethereum for a long time now, and it's paid off very well, and I expect it to have another leg higher. So I'm more interested in Ethereum 
than Bitcoin. So there you have it. Do you feel Ethereum will likely outpace the King Crypto, as Raul Powell suggests? Let me know in the comments below. And before I break down final story of the day, IMF recession warning sees Bitcoin dip under $21,000 amid fresh $1 million Bitcoin price forecast. That's right. And I break down the latest price prediction from Plan B, creator of the Bitcoin stock to flow model, who's predicting a $100,000 to $1 million Bitcoin price range. But first, I want to remind you to smash that show more button right below this video in the description for detailed analysis of what's going on in the market. This goes for all 1,200 plus videos right here on my YouTube channel. And the best thing you can do to help support the channel in this crypto movement is smash that subscribe button and ring that bell to turn on all notifications and be sure to drop a comment. It helps out tremendously with the YouTube algorithm. And of course, you can find me on all the major podcasts and platforms from Spotify, home of the Joe Rogan experience to Apple's iTunes. And if you're not tuned into the pod, be sure to check it out. And of course, you can follow me all across social media from Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram, and TikTok. So wherever you at, be sure to plug in and follow me there. But all right, now let's break down our final story of the day. The higher the base rate hike by the Fed, the more problematic the outlook for crypto investors as more tightening would mean more conservative conditions prevailing across the economy. Quoting crypto analyst Rec Capital, Bitcoin has lost the higher low, which represented a lower time frame technical uptrend. The trend has shifted. And elsewhere on macro, the International Monetary Fund, better known as the IMF, released its July 2022 World Economic Outlook, forecasting a significant slowdown in global growth, which should average 3.2% this year and 2.9% next year in 2023. Quoting them here, the risk of recession is particularly prominent in 2023, when in several economies, growth is expected to bottom out. Household savings accumulated during the pandemic will have declined, and even small shocks could cause economies to stall. And it also said, the example, according to the latest forecast, the United States will have real GDP growth growth of only 0.6% in the fourth quarter of 2023 on a year-over-year -year basis, which will make it increasingly challenging to avoid a recession. Now, a further post described the current pullback as a logical sequel to Bitcoin giving up its 200-week moving average level of support after briefly regaining it last week. As Red Capital shares here, this Bitcoin pullback is a technical aftermath of rejecting from the 200-week moving average after a weekly close below it. And quoting crypto analyst Ambessa, Bitcoin update, patience is a virtue. Wait for a reversal pattern to re-enter. No setup for an entry at 21,600, so we stay patient. Bitcoin is trading 11% lower after the last exit. There is no need to FOMO yet. I enter if I see strength or the lows of the yellow projection. Now for the moment you've all been waiting for, Plan B's $1 million Bitcoin price prediction. Others had reason to be cautiously bullish on the King Crypto, with conviction increasing in line with the timeframes under observation. Quoting Income Sharks, Bitcoin, volatile week playing out as expected. Just had to see what was coming to prepare for this job. Both buy zones hit. Now I hold and wait for $30,000 in a few months. Now is not the time to get bearish and sell. That was last week. Meanwhile, Plan B, creator of the Bitcoin stock to flow price models. Meanwhile, maintained that Bitcoin could still trade as high as a million dollars by 2027. And at the same time, he predicted on the day U.S. equities would reach new heights never seen before. Quoting the quant analyst here, some of you are afraid of macro and the link between Bitcoin and stock markets, etc. In my opinion, the next five years, S&P 500 will be in the five to $6,000 range and Bitcoin in the $100,000 to $1 million range. Short term is noise, long term is signal. Let me know if you agree or disagree. Will plan B that we're likely to see a $100,000 to $1 million Bitcoin price range within the next five years? And now checking out another recent update he shared, Bitcoin is obviously linked to stock markets and all things of value because fiat currencies are deflated. Crucial difference is that Bitcoin grows much faster because it's scarcer. In the same period, S&P 500 went from 1,000 to 4,000, that's 4X, and Bitcoin went from $2 to 20,000, 10 thousand x send it less rick and go and someone responded to plan b you mean bitcoin went 10x plan b responded no end 2011 bitcoin was three dollars and s p 1250 today bitcoin is 21,300 and s p 3900 roughly 7,000 x versus 3x huge difference Touche. Now for the top three comments from yesterday's episode, Steve Hubbs wrote, I can now almost guarantee that Bitcoin formed a low at 17,567 on June 18th. Why? Anytime you get Tone Vase coming out predicting lower prices, you know the bottom is in. He was predicting less than $1,000 in December 2018 when Bitcoin bottomed at $3,129. Word up, fam. Thanks for tuning in and for sharing. 
Hado. Our next featured comment comes from Lawrence Abramoff. I really want to know where they are sourcing their data. Here in Australia, I don't personally know more than two people who are significantly into crypto. Those that are, are kids with less than $1,000 invested. I've been telling people, if you're watching any Bitcoin video or looking into it now and you don't put in at least 5% of your savings, I don't want to hear the you're so lucky BS when the price is six figures. I'm 100% free cash into top 10 crypto. Some people. So there you have it. Thanks for sharing and much love. And our third and final featured comment comes from the one and only Bring Facts. I am so scared I dropped another $5,000 into BTC. Bigger discounts are still welcome. I have more where that came from. Let's get it. Keep stacking them sats, fam. And to be featured on tomorrow's episode, drop me a comment right down below.